Hello everyone and welcome to Body Bags. I'll be your reviewer for today. I'm Lonnie from Horror Heaven 77. And uh, I think you, you know, if you've been watching the videos this past week, you already know that uh, um, instead of doing a label this week, we're doing, uh, we're reviewing films that haven't been reviewed f uh, before from the year 1980. 1980 really was a good year for horror. Um, you know, you had movies like Friday the 13th, The Shining, Dress to Kill, Cannibal Holocaust, like so many other good horror movies come out that year. The movie that I'm talking about today uh, is a movie that I do enjoy and I do like, um, even though I do have a few problems with it. But the movie I'm talking about is Motel Hell. Uh, the movie originally it was meant to be directed by Toby Hooper. And uh, I don't know all the details of what happened, but uh, Hooper left the project. And in a way, I think it's kind of a shame because I think, you know, when you, you know, you hear what the story's about and everything, I think it would have been really fun to see what his approach to the material would have been, you know. And uh, I don't know, um, you know, it could have been, you know, very comedic and, and you know, same as maybe like uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, or it could have been more violent and, you know, scary and disturbing. Who's to say? We'll never know. But the movie did ultimately ended up being directed by Kevin Connor. And uh, as my understanding, that um, he approached the project and decided to take it on on the provision that he could, you know, kind of tone down the horror and the gore aspect and more heighten the, com the comedic aspect of it, which, you know, kind of does hurt this movie in a little bit of a sense. But still, I would definitely recommend this movie and say, yeah, you know, give it a watch. It's, it's definitely a fun movie to watch. Uh, that being said, let's get into it. The story is about this, uh, farmer who runs a motel. His name is farmer Vincent and he's played by, um, the late great, uh, cowboy character actor, Roy Calhoun. And he lives at this motel that he runs with his sister, uh, Ida played by Nancy Parsons, who Nancy Parson, as you can see on there, um, she's done, you know, she's been in movies, she's been in television, everything else. But I think, you know, anybody who knows Nancy Parson, she's always going to be remembered as Miss Ballbreaker from the Porky's trilogy. But anyway, so they run this motel, but Vincent also has the side business where he processes his own meat products, uh, particularly, uh, beef jerky. And I think, you know, obviously you know, seeing the cover and everything else, I think you can already guess pretty much how he gets the beef jerky. So he, uh, it's the middle of the night. He goes in, checks and sees that Ida is asleep. So he, you know, goes out, gets in his truck, drives out, you know, sets some traps and a motorcycle with, uh, this older man, I believe his name was Boris and this young woman named Terry, who I guess is supposed to be his girlfriend. Uh, we find out that Terry in this in this movie, apparently her character has a thing for really older guys, you know. Um, but anyway, so, you know, they're driving across the trap, you know, blows out the tire. Of their mo or no, it's not a trap. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I screwed up. Vincent has a shotgun and he shoots out the tire of the motorcycle and, you know, the motorcycle crashes. Um, he, you know takes Boris, puts him in the truck, but then he see in the back of the truck uh, because he's going to deal with him in a separate way. But he sees that Terry is still, you know, clean consciousness and things like that. And he decides that uh, Terry is worth saving and, you know, not going to the same fate as the other people that, you know, Vincent traps. So he takes her back to the motel and uh, he, you know, asks his sister Ida to pretty much patch her up and take care of her. One of the biggest problems that I have with this movie. Um, oh, by the way, we're introduced to Vincent's brother, uh, Bruce. And, uh, you know, we're getting into one of the biggest problems I have with the movie is that uh, in the in terms of the character, Terry, um, very little is known about her. Um, it's never revealed that she has a family, she has friends, she has acquaintances, anything like that. And for whatever reason, I guess maybe they play it off in the movie. We'll see. Vincent, uh, tells Terry that Boris died from the accident and that he buried him. And, you know, you, I guess you could chalk it up to say that, well, because Bruce is his brother and Bruce is his sheriff, that, uh, Bruce just pretty much just well, it's my brother. I'll just kind of let the whole thing slide. But, 
even still, that kind of seems weird. You know, it doesn't seem like that's something any sheriff would do, even if it was, you know, his brother. But I guess apparently he lets the whole thing slide. But like I said, we don't find out that, you know, Terry has any kind of family or friends or anybody that cares about her. And so that's kind of the strange thing. She never goes home. You know, she never says like, you know, oh, I need to call my family or my parents or brothers or sisters or friends or cousins or anybody, you know. And so you're sitting here thinking like, well, where where the hell did she come from? But it's never established, you know, it's never said even in the movie, like, you know, she had any kind of problems at home with her family. So she ran away with this guy, Boris. Nothing is ever explained about her character. And for whatever reason, Terry just accepts the fact that um, Vincent buried her boyfriend, Boris, which, you know, he buried him, but not in the way you're thinking. But, uh, you know, and then she just decides to just stay there and live with Vincent and Ida and even though Vincent, you know, wants her to be around and, and keeps her around, you know, clearly Ida does have some jealousy and she doesn't particularly want her there. And then, um, uh, you know, as the movie progresses, Vincent and Ida, they trap more and more people. They use animal traps. They, you know, um, like I said, you know, they'll shoot out the tires. And then, you know, like at one point they, they kidnap a or they, yeah, they abduct a band and one of the band members, everybody, you know, if you watch this movie, one of the ones you definitely notice is John Ratzenberger from Cheers and things like that, House 2, things like that. And then what we realize is that uh, Vincent and Ida, what they do is, is they, they take the people that they abduct and they have basically kind of like a secret garden. And what they do is they dig holes in the ground and bury the, everybody up to their necks and then, you know, they inject them. What I guess it's supposed to be like a painkiller or something. Then they cut their vocal cords so they can't scream and they can't, you know, they just do this kind of, they just make a noise, you know, just kind of a gurgling sound. But they can't scream. They can't call out for help or anything like that. Um, and uh, basically what they do is they keep them in this garden that they can't get out of. And pretty much they fatten them up and get them ready so that they can kill them and then basically, you know, butcher them and turn them into meat products. Um, you know, like Vincent makes, you know, mainly is said in the movie about how he makes uh, beef jerky out of people, but uh, also too, you know, there, there's talk about he makes ham out of them and just different kind of meat products and everything. And then of course, you know, being a horror movie, you know, and, horror, and one of the big staples of horror films, is that, you know, a lot of the times your, your sadistic, crazy people, you know, have a God fetish or, you know, they're religious wackos. So of course, Vincent and Ida, they honestly believe that what they're doing is for the greater good. You know, Vincent even has a, he talks about in the movie about how, you know, one of the biggest problems in the world is that there's too many people, not enough food. So what he's doing solves both problems at the same time. But, you know, they do honestly believe that what they're doing is God's work and God's plan and things like that. Um, so as the movie goes on, they keep, you know, and then like people who come to their motel. At one point, there's a, a couple that's like a swinging couple. They come to the motel and, and Vincent and Ida, you know, abduct them and put them in the garden and so on. And then um, as the movie progresses, you have uh, Bruce. He want he very much wants to have a romantic relationship with Terry, and at one point he even almost rapes Terry, which is kind of unsettling. But it, and even then, Terry seems like she's fine with it. It's weird, you know. Um, but you know, she's kind of basically, you know, she's pretty much putting Bruce in the friend zone. But she starts to develop, you know, a uh, you know uh, an affection for Vincent. Like I said, she definitely prefers the older gentleman in this movie. But um, <clears throat> uh, as the movie goes on and Terry decides, you know, Vincent at one point, Terry decides she wants to make love with Vincent. But he says, no, we can't until we get married. And then, uh, you know, Bruce finds out from Wolfman Jack. Wolfman Jack makes an appearance in the movie and you hear his voice on the radio throughout the movie. Um you know, you find out he finds out that Terry's going to marry Vincent and he can't deal with it. So he goes to try to talk Terry out of it. And, you know, Vincent comes in and chases him off. Um, but 
So Bruce decides then he's going to start, you know, looking into both Vincent and Ida. And he starts putting everything together, which is kind of weird that it takes him this long, you know, especially being as being their brother and living with them for all these years. You figure he would have found this kind of thing out by now. That's another. Like I said, this movie does have like a lot of plot holes and a lot of gaps in logic. And that's going to be kind of a big problem. This is definitely a movie. Um, you know, it's not a bad movie, but it's definitely a movie. You really got to kind of shut your brain off and, and, you know, just try to enjoy it for what it is. Um, and then, but, you know, uh, we're getting towards a climax. I'm not going to give anything away, but you definitely see homages to um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There is a scene in here that you could say, you could sit here and argue and say that maybe Toby Hooper even kind of ripped off for Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. It involves, you know, uh, people fighting with chainsaws. I'll just say that. Um, but there's also like homages to like Night of the Living Dead and everything else. Um, but overall the movie is, it's entertaining. It's fun. Um, I think the biggest problem that I had, I remember being really underwhelmed by the movie the first time I saw it years back, because I remember, you know, we would get issues of Fangoria and Fangoria was, you know, just, just advertising this movie to the hilt. I mean, you know, there was the one with the cover of, you know, the, you know, the guy with the big long bladed chainsaw and wearing the pig's head with the slit and the blood running down and everything. So you kind of go into this movie thinking you're going to see, you know, you know, people getting hacked up with chainsaws and stuff, kind of in the same way as like, you know, if you watch pieces or something like that, or you're going into this thinking you're going to see another kind of variation of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which you kind of do. But, um, like I said, the problem, the big, not, I don't want to say problem, but the thing about this movie, it really has played a lot more for laughs. It's played much more of a comedy than it is a horror film. Um, but, uh, that doesn't mean it's not worth watching. Of course, you know, this was going into the eighties where, um, that kind of became a rule with a lot of, of, um, horror filmmakers and horror films, you know, when it started going into the eighties, you know, that, uh, filmmakers decided that, you know, in, you know, that they would, you know, insert comedy into their films. They would insert humor, you know, put things in their movies, you know, for the audience to laugh at. So the audience doesn't laugh at the whole movie itself. And to kind of, you know, the idea is kind of like give them something to laugh at. So then when the scary stuff happens, the audience will be caught off guard and it'd be more frightening. And this movie definitely falls into that. But, um, I would say there's a little bit too much humor in the movie. Um, like a lot of gaps in logic, a lot of plot holes in this movie. Um, you know, the movie's not particularly scary at all. Um, it's got some good, you know, creepy moments, but it's not, it's just not scary. Uh, it's really, you know, you'd be surprised how goreless this movie is. I mean, this movie gives you the indication, like it's going to be a gore fest, just wall to wall gore everywhere, blood and guts all over the place. And the movie's not that at all. It's very, it's incredibly tame. Um, a lot of the times when you see, um, any kind of um, like butchery or, you know, like when they go into Vincent and Ida's uh, slaughterhouse, most of the time, all you see is just kind of like um, pigs, hogs that they've, you know, butchered and things like that. But, you you know, it's like usually if, if uh, like, you know, they're getting ready to cut somebody up or, or cut somebody's head off with a chainsaw or something, you know, it would always cut away or something. So you don't really see much of anything. So the movie is pretty relatively goreless. There's maybe just kind of little bits here and there, but um um, I would definitely say though, still, if you are a fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, if, you know, um, you just like those kind of movies with like, you know, crazy kind of hillbillies that, you know, like, you know, kill people, cut them up, you know, cannibalize them, things like that. Then, you know, if you like those kind of movies, I would definitely say give Motel Hell a watch, but just don't expect something as shocking and, and visceral as like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, because you're not going to get it. But, um. Although I will say, you know, um, Rory Calhoun, he actually does a really good job as Vincent. He does play kind of the insanity well. And, you know, he but, um, you know, you could see why you could kind of see why he could get away with this for so long. He has this kind of really charm and just like ability, like ability about him that, you know, like he can easily like, you know, schmooze people so that they don't catch on to what he's really doing. 
Um, Nancy Parson, um, she has moments where she could be creepy, but a lot of her stuff is kind of played more for comedic element. But, but anyway, yeah, I would definitely say go ahead and give Motel Hell a watch. Just don't, if you haven't seen the movie before, just don't expect, you know, like an all out gore fest. Uh, don't expect a movie that's particularly scary. Like I said, the movie has more comedy in it, but, um, anyway, yeah. So still, it's still worth a watch. I would definitely say it's got some unique ideas about it, you know, especially the idea of, you know, planting people in the ground so that they can, you know, uh, fatten them up and get ready to, you know, butcher them like, you know, like hogs or cattle or something like that. So they can make beef jerky out of them. So it's interesting for that. But So anyway, that's pretty much going to do it. Uh, if anybody took the time to watch this, I thank you for doing it. I appreciate you for doing it. I also hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a like. If you haven't already, go and subscribe to the Body Bags channel. We have a different reviewer, one for every day of the week. I'm the Friday reviewer. We have, you know, seven different guys. Everybody's doing great stuff. You know, we have more, you know, theme weeks like this, you know, picking years of horror films or label weeks or theme weeks and everything else. So, yeah, we all kinds of fun stuff. So, everybody, please uh, come back and um, take care. And I'll see you later.